Hello, YouTube. I haven't done an intro for a YouTube video in a long time. I kind of forgot how to do it, but hello, YouTube. It's me, Sam. In today's video, we're going to be critiquing all of, well, some at least of my 2011 artworks. I did a video like this last year in 2010. I'll put a link in the description. And if you're watching this live on Twitch, first of all, hi, hello to everybody here. I hope you're having a lovely Friday. It's Friday while I'm streaming this. So I'm gonna be critiquing my artworks and just a little disclaimer at the start. When I talk about critiquing my artworks, I don't mean like slamming them, bashing them, like, oh, how could I do this? Like, oh, this is terrible, look at this trash. Like, I, I'm not that kind of person, I'm not that kind of artist. I know there's a lot of other YouTuber artists who are like that. For me, I just think it's a little bit difficult for people who are on a similar level, either below that level, above that level, or just somewhere around that same level as the artist who's bashing their work and they feel a little bit awkward, embarrassed, or ashamed, or, or some, I just don't want that negativity there. I still want to critique and like talk about the negatives, but I want to do it in a constructive, more uplifting sort of way and not just straight up bashing my old artworks. So if you're into that, feel free to keep watching this video and we can get started. So I'm actually technically cheating and I'm gonna start, I believe this was actually 2010 with this piece right here. And I want to bring it up just because it has a lot of things that I want to mention. So this was a commission. I got 200 DeviantArt points for it, and the person ended up tipping an extra 100. So in total, I was paid 300 DeviantArt points for this, which is dollar equivalent to $3, but I couldn't get the money from DeviantArt, so it was $0. <laughs> so I'm gonna start out, I'm gonna do a critique sandwich. So positives, things that could be improved, end with positives. December, December. so it's close enough to 2011, right? Right off the bat, we have some ideas, but I'm gonna start with the positives and say that I really like the hair. I had the sort of hairstyle I was playing with, and I think I started to get more familiar with it here. And you can really see like, okay, there's a little bit of where the hair is coming from, like the roots and stuff. So I like that. I kind of like the strands. The pose is pretty dynamic, even for stuff that I do nowadays. <laughs> I'm still really bad at poses. I think, I think the eyes and the eyebrows stuff works. The main reason I want to talk about this one is the negatives, which I think is probably at least a little obvious. And the contrast is like invisible. Everything is really, really flat. And I actually wanted to take this into Photoshop and just kind of show the difference that it can make. Let's start with soft light and see what happens. I'm going to be using straight black and white. This is a technique I use even nowadays to kind of help me with my contrast. But you can see like the jawline and the neck it's pretty invisible. This is gonna saturate it a bit, so you'd wanna desaturate it a little bit more, but here we go. Just quickly kind of add in some darker shadows here. I think my light, where, where's my light source actually? <laughs> That's another question I have. Um, it looks like I was trying this way, but then the shadow on the neck is on this side. So probably another thing worth mentioning is a uh, light source here. Two seconds and you can already see like a huge difference in things to like help it pop. And you can really tell when you put it in black and white. If you're struggling, first of all, put it in black and white, kind of see where things are. It's not a requirement to have a good balance of light and darks, um, but it's more aesthetically pleasing. Our eyes are, human eyes are just drawn to high contrast areas. So if you have a white sheet of paper and you put a black dot on it, your eyes are gonna go straight to the black dot. Just adding that little bit of dark kind of helps her pop a little bit more and it separates just the, I mean, You'd want to push it more than this, but um, separates a little bit of the neck from the jaw. And also, this was the year that I did a college report on Twilight. It was real, that really happened. And to go along with the report, I did um, some artworks to present. Uh, we had to present our project in front of the class, and I picked the most outlandish subject. <laughs> for my report. I don't even remember what the report was supposed to be about, but I, I did a report on it and then I had to show everybody my artwork. It was it was the talk of the class though. <laughs> but I did a couple series of like semi-comic like things. So this was the first one. Actually, let's check the date really quick. This this is still de December. Okay, oops, this is December t uh, 2010 still, but it's December 31st, so it counts. It's, it's close. So the comic is, this is Bella with Jacob in the background. Oh, Edward, you're handsome, you're cold, your skin is like ice, you're hard. And then Jacob says, do you even know anything about his personality? <laughs> He's perfect. We're here to critique the artwork though, all right? Not Twilight, so hashtag leave Twilight alone. <laughs> But yes, I really do like the stick figure, Jacob. I, I'm not really a comic artist, even though I draw a comic. It's kind of, I don't really do gag stuff. So it's kind of hard to critique that aspect of that. 
Um, but I do like the gag and the silly faces, I think, kind of emphasize things. Things that could be improved, I think, are just generally the overall anatomy of everything. This picture up here with Edward in the suit, like the suit looks pretty nice. I think I probably used a reference for it, but I, you know, there's always little improvements you could do. But I think the main thing for me here is it's a little bit yaoi-fied with the very tiny head and the very, very broad shoulders. If anybody knows clamp, kind of gives me a little bit of clamp vibe there. So I think kind of balancing out that anatomy would be good. Um, like for here, the hands wrapping around things is <laughs> Still a thing I struggle with, but having a reference to see what it looks like to have a hand and fingers actually wrap around something because they kind of just look like little blobs. And if I had gone with that style, that's okay, but I'm seeing some like knuckles here. So I think I was kind of going for hands. Like the anatomy here, I think could be a little bit improved. Um, I don't know if this is not safe for Twitch, but like the nipple placement is a little off, gonna be honest here. I mean, there's, there's other anatomy things here, but I think since Jacob is the main focus, like focusing on male anatomy or just stereotypical male anatomy, since the idea is to emphasize his masculinity, would have improved this. So this is the next Twilight piece. So this is supposed to be Bella, and the idea was that it was a self-insert critique, <laughs> that the character of Bella doesn't have depth, and so like you can put yourself into it. My opinions on that have actually changed over the years. I mean, I've gotten a lot more apathetic I think to things as time has gone on it's like life is too short why should I care kind of attitude and if you want to make like an author insert a self insert a Mary Sue like just go for it just do what makes you happy like it's not hurting anybody to make a Mary Sue but anyway um, I like the color of the pants and I kind of like where the shirt was going kind of like where the hair was going I think it works for critique, I think it also comes down to anatomy, which if it wasn't obvious, anatomy is gonna be kind of a theme. Even nowadays, I think anatomy can always be improved. It kind of looks like I just drew the clothing without the underlying base of the figure. Again, a lot of the advice that I'm saying, it's like aesthetics wise for appealing to a broader audience. It's art, you can do whatever you want. Generally speaking, there's nothing wrong with this drawing. But in terms of like wanting to be more aesthetically pleasing to a larger audience, people prefer to have more realistic or balanced anatomy. Um, they prefer to have things make sense in their eyes. So if you have a clothing fold that's like doing something weird, like just out of nowhere, like that's gonna bug us. And we might not know why, because like people might not be aware that something is wrong, but they'll feel like something is wrong. Kind of like Uncanny Valley. I'm not saying this is Uncanny Valley, I'm just saying like, Sometimes people know stuff without realizing it. To be more appealing to general audience, it helps to have an underdrawing of the base anatomy of the figure, and then you can put the clothing on top. It just, it makes things easier for you as an artist. Like it does take more time because then you have to draw the entire body and it sometimes suck when you draw like a body really well and you're really proud of it and you have to put clothes on top of it and it's super disappointing. But it does help guide you to like where the clothing falls on the body, how the folds may work. Cause you can kind of see in this artwork, like like she has a, a waist, but there's no hips. There's not really a butt there. <laughs> there's not really a, an attention to like the connecting of the legs to the hips. But I do really like the color of the pants. I just, I feel like it works nice with the shirt. I think that's what's getting me with this. So this was an OC, another OC of mine that I never draw and I never really drew back then anyway. We're in January. Hey, we made it to 2011. <laughs> Welcome to the 2011 art critique stream, everybody. Oh, 2008. So the first one is from 2008 and the second one is from 2011. And there, you, I mean, right off the bat, there's definitely some improvements. I mean, ignoring the outfit change. It's also kind of a different style, so it's a bit hard to judge improvements there too. But even just like looking at the shoulders and the neck and stuff, like I definitely have a better grasp back then, <laughs> understanding uh, that relationship. I definitely didn't hide the hands. I don't know what you're talking about. Again, realism shouldn't be an end goal for everybody. And it also, it, everything comes back to just general audience aesthetics, what we find appealing. And it typically is realism but I don't think realism should be an end goal for everybody. It's nice to dabble in realism. Even if you never ever wanna draw realism, I think it's still important to just dabble because there are things that you can learn in trying different styles, different mediums, uh, different techniques, different everything that might tell you something about yourself, something about your art. You might be like, oh, I hate realism, um, blah, 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 but I really like how 
I do this when I do realism. And so you can take that aspect and just put it into whatever style you want to do. But I, I do think that there is some improvement with the uh, anatomy. And, and then the thing that I could point out for some negatives, I think it, it still comes down to like that waist and hip. I know I, I don't, I'm pretty sure I didn't draw the legs under this. And I think, again, that probably would have helped guide me in terms of, in terms of how like the skirt would fall. Like you, you can have somebody who's like skinny like this without those hips, but just, <laughs> I'm really distracted by this. Just the, the very long, the very long torso um, is a little distracting. And I think I even knew this at the time, if I remember right, was that I loved how the hair looked here. Um, but the difference between why the hair to me feels like it works better on the older one versus the newer one is the slight ch style change. Um, this one is much more cartoony. So things can be a little bit more exaggerated and played with and it can still work. Like realism can find itself in cartoonish works. But anyway, so I think it doesn't work as well here because I didn't transition it into this new style I was attempting. So it kind of looks a little bit strange like the roots of where like the hair would, not the roots, but um, like that center part where the, the hair comes out, um, it doesn't really feel like that here. And so I think I could have played, been a little bit more brave and played a little bit more with that. All right, so here's, here's the next Twilight uh, comic with Edward and Bella and Edward saying, hi, I'm Edward. And Bella says, hi, I love you. Obviously the critique here is the insta love in Twilight, which again, write what you want to write, but in terms of me as a reader, I don't like insta love. I like me some slow burn, okay? I wanna work for it. <laughs> I'm trying to think of positives here. It's always, I like to think of, um, and I generally think it's a good idea, especially when looking at your own artworks, to find positives, to kind of tell yourself, okay, this was working for me, and also to help with the whole negative self-talk. I know a lot of artists, even me, like every artist, struggles with negative self-talk because we're all our own worst critic. And I think it's good practice to be like, here's some things that I like about my art and here's some things that work in this picture. And it kind of builds upon itself that you start to have an easier time not hating your artwork as much. And unless you like really want to hate your artwork for some reason. Like if it upsets you, like if it's not, art is less fun because of that, I think it's good practice to try and find positives. That being said, as I try to find positives in this, I think a lot of this is like, some color, like I like the color with Edward's hair. I kind of like this, how the color that I chose for the shading, I know, it, I think it was a multiply layer, but even still like that purple, I think it kind of works nicely. Kind of like the jeans, the jeans aren't too bad. Unfortunately, I think for this particular piece, I, I see more negatives, but I try, I'm trying to find positives. Okay, we're working here, but there's, there's a lot going on in this one. <laughs> and I think a lot of it comes down to this face. Like I think Edward's face looks pretty decent. I think Bella's face, could um, use a little bit more love. I have profiles are something I still so struggle with and probably some advice I would give to my old self back then is trace, find photos or take my own photos of faces in profile and just trace a whole bunch of them and just get used to that. And then also look at like the skull and like understand the anatomy of the face and why things are the way that they are. This seems like heavily tilted forward, like the skull is kind of going this way towards Edward and the jaw is going backwards, like towards the bubble, the speech bubble. A little bit of that. And then just generally the, the body in profile seems a little bit awkward. And then the hands, oh hands. But I like the hearts too, the hearts are cute. And if I also to critique the comic itself, don't have the words like right next to the edge of the, there's so much room in this speech bubble. And I could have, I could have made this speech bubble any shape and size and like written the words in any way. And I chose to do it there. It's like, why? So make sure you give your words and speech bubbles some nice cushion room. <laughs> Unless there's like a reason you would want to put it there. There was no reason for me to do that there. Okay, so this was a gift to a friend of mine, still in January, 2011. I do actually like the bold saturated colors in this. And I'm not sure if I color picked from her reference or not. I'm not usually like a super saturated kind of person, but I think it just works here. I like the eye and I like a bit of the boldness with the outlines. Abs, <laughs> yes, there's abs. I think we all like abs. So that's definitely in, in the positives there. And the blush is cute. And I don't know, I like some of the, the hard shading looks kind of nice. I think, I think the hair, the hair looks nice. 
This one, this one's pretty good. Critique-wise, given the fact that this character is shirtless, I think it's pretty obvious I'm kind of limited to the fact that it's anatomy that I, um, I could improve. And I did this a lot actually with pecs, which is very strange. Now I kind of want to look at how I draw pecs now, because it's like, do I still do this? I sort of put the pecs here almost like this is kind of hard to describe like with the torso almost instead of like Understanding it as a separate entity you want with anatomy to everything for everything to like connect and intertwine because everything is connected and Intertwined, but it's also kind of at least in my opinion kind of a good idea to understand things also Individually and how those things connect and I don't think I really had that grasped here with the pectorals. The shoulders also look like they're kind of doing two different things here. Uh, one of them kind of looks longer than the other and the deltoids are also drastically two different sizes. And it's, I can't I can't get over the, how I did nipples back then. <laughs> like the abs are, are by themselves in this cartoonish style. I think the abs work kind of well. I think the highlights are kind of throwing it for Like the back, like erasing here, I think that works, but like, this highlight here is a little strange. And cell shading was a thing I was still really practicing with that, with back then. And I think what would have helped me a lot with cell shading is breaking things down into very simple forms. Let me see if there's a way I can kind of show this. Like at least in Photoshop, there's like free online websites that allow you to do this thing too, which is basically you uh, crush your values together and to sort of make it look like, um, like you have black, gray, and white and you kind of work with stuff in between. So let's make this black and white and see if I can get my point across. Please Photoshop work with me. <laughs> sort of like that. So if I bring them closer together, you get less of that in between stuff. There's ways to make it look nicer. <laughs> I'm not very I'm not very good at this, but you can see like okay, these are the hard shadows like where the the hard shadows would go and the hard highlights because with cell shading like you don't really have that option of a gradient hopefully this makes sense it's probably a bad example because the, the flower is a little washed out that's kind of the idea that i was that i was getting at there was that i don't think the highlight should go there <laughs> i think understanding the form of a pectoral especially if i want him to be buff the highlight should be over here where the light would hit on the on the top of the pectoral because the pectoral like it's not flat and here it looks flat because of that. And there's, there's other nitpick things I, I could say like the like the neck there's not really this neck connecting to head but I think if I had done the shoulders the deltoids and the pectorals better sometimes it's just like one or two things and also when I give uh, critiques even to myself I don't think it's a good idea to say this 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 there's like tw like 20 things you need to fix with this picture to make it better because then that gets to be too much like there's too many things to focus on like if you just focus on a couple things at a time and just sort of gradually build yourself up I think that'll be less overwhelming less confusing less less all the bad <laughs> so I try I try to limit it to not too many things so let's go here to Demona. And this was May. What in the world? Wow, I didn't do a lot of art. This is Demona from Gargoyles. Excellent show. Definitely recommend. And this one, I still really like this one. I like the idea of it. I love the pose. Really, it looks very fluid. You can really see like that S curve there. I kind of like the scratchiness. It was a different sort of style attempt. Uh, and then also the texture that's kind of subtle, but like the background texture that you see, it's a little bit subtly overlaid the character. I think the colors from that, cause I probably used overlay or soft light with that, with this texture and just lower the opacity. I think that helped balance all of the colors better. So that it sort of unified them together. But um, for things that could be improved, the anatomy, <laughs> Uh, I think how the neck is here, even though the hand is covering it, having a, a neck, basically, her head's just kind of floating there, I think would help. And also if you remove the hand, because assuming the hand is on the neck, you have a really uncomfortably kind of raised and like, it's almost like her head's really kind of far over and that shoulder's long, just like a little bit too long. And then a bit of the perspective here, because the armband is uh, turned downwards, it looks like the arm should be going down instead of out. So I think if I had basically flipped the armband over, I think that would have helped with the illusion of the perspective of her arm coming out. Yeah, it, it almost kind of doesn't also here look like her feet are really holding up her body weight. The torso is perhaps a bit too long. There's a lot of little things, but this is, this is pretty good for what I did back then, I think. What's next? Oh, it's another Twilight. It's the Twilight finale. Here we go. When was this one done? May. 2011. What what a what a time to follow me on DeviantArt. <laughs> you get stuff like this, and then you get stuff like this immediately after. 
So we have Edward and Bella here. Bella, I'll never leave you. Bella, I'm leaving you. She proceeds to be a little bit bothered by that. And I just realized I put Team Jacob and Team Edward on their shirts. That's such a good idea. Um, so we have uh, Jacob, Bella, I'll never leave you. Bella, I'm leaving you. She proceeds to also, you know, not be happy with that decision. And then Edward, hey, Bella, I'm back. Me too. And she's unalived. And uh, then Jacob is like, well, shit. <laughs> and yes, it's the return of the, the stick figure, <laughs> Jacob. I like the idea of it. I think it's really absurd and silly. I think I remember spending like a really long time working on this. Oh, wait, wait, wait. This is too sexy for a shirt. <laughs> All these little, all these little jokes are like squeezed into it. But I like the the attempt at like adding a little bit more detail with the hair. And also, I, I could see where I was going here with the backgrounds, with the light blue, and it gets darker because it's like, oh, he's saying something bad. Um, and how it's like a light bluish green sort of here, and then it gets darker here because it's bad. I don't know why these two are completely different colors since it doesn't really follow the theme that I, I was seemingly doing everywhere else. But but I do think like right here with the hand, I think the the cell shading is a bit better. But like for here once again it's the pectorals i don't know what was going on in 2011 and pectorals but i was having a time apparently and and nipples also as well <laughs> But yeah, the, this is really the main distracting factor for me. Like, I don't know why I made the background a different color. And also speaking of like color balance, like this Demona piece was so much more unified with great assistance because of the texture. Um, I think I should have done something like that. It didn't have to be a texture, but I was, I mean, I was using Photoshop and Photoshop has a color balance feature already built in. So I probably could have adjusted the colors just to kind of make them a little bit more uniform and connected and it's a little disjointed. But yeah, I think that's the main thing for me is this, the same stuff that was on the, the first comic was, it just, this is really distracting. My eyes keep going back here. I think that was a pretty good pose. That was a hard one for me to do. So I think I'm gonna compliment myself there more so than than critique it. But yeah, the main thing that's really distracting me is Jacob. Work, work on those nudes, girl. All right, all right, next up. Oh, hey, speaking of. <laughs> And I remember using a reference for this one. So this is Kyo. He's from Fruits Baskets. This is May 2011. So I definitely used a photo reference with this one. Positives, the face and the hair. Chef's kiss. I think that even now, like this, I think this looks really nice. Like the cell shading here, I think is definitely getting better. And even the hands, like the hands, I think are, are moving towards improvement. <laughs> Hands could always be moving towards improvement. Probably made a huge difference because I used a reference. I just can't get over how much I love the fact that he's like got heavy eyeliner going and just this, that thick line. I think it works really well. Having that harsh shadow here, he's not like super up against the background. I think there's things that make it a little bit off that he's not quite on this background. I still think it helps him pop and it looks nice. Yes, I did draw the hands and I didn't cover them. <laughs> Thank you for recognizing that. But like even like look at the neck, like it connects to the head much better. The shoulders are much better. Like having a reference makes such a difference. So don't be afraid to use references, kids. But um, in terms of critique, obviously, even still, things can be improved. Like the pecs are definitely better, but they still feel a little bit off to me. Again, the nipples also feel a little off to me. Um, I think the hands could be much stronger, just sort of paying a little bit closer attention to the reference and taking a little bit more time. You slow down a little bit. I think that would have helped uh, improve this. The abs also look a little bit off to me. And just this line here with the arm is not right. Like I, I see what I'm going for, but like the longer I stare at it, like I can't stop staring at it. So I think definitely paying, like having that reference made a huge difference, but like um, taking more time with understanding the reference, maybe even tracing the reference too, just to get yourself really familiar. But yeah, I think that's kind of the main things or just more subtle anatomy like mistakes, but it's such a huge difference, the neck and the shoulders. It's crazy. Just like the last couple of pictures we've been looking at. Here we go, Zuko. This is the one I shared on uh, on the Twitter. So this is August. I just, I didn't do art back then. And first of all, my eyes, this is very bright, but in a good way. I actually really like, I really like the fire. I don't know what brush I used. Yeah, nice flame. Thank you. Like, I don't know what I did <laughs> to do this. This wasn't a, like a fire brush. I just found a brush and I'm like, I love this texture. And I just, I did fire out of it. And like, I don't even, I don't remember how I did it, but I'm really jealous of me back then. <laughs> 
Like the fire is really nice, the dark background to kind of help him pop out more. And the background didn't really need to be anything. The fire was already like, that's like what you want to sort of frame him as the character. And you have him having, he's like an angry expression. I think that's good practice different expressions the fire kind of helps emphasize his upsetness you have kind of a stiff pose which i think is okay because we're kind of going for like this rigid anger but yeah i also really liked um the hair i think the hair is nice and i think the shading is kind of neat too with the the scratches uh, in terms of critique he's a little bit leaned the idea i guess is that it was a center line focus even the fire is not centered like everything's kind of off to the side and in general like his whole body is kind of leaning a little bit in one direction i wanted to have him be a little bit hunched over but like there's still a neck when you hunch over and I, I know i have like 20 gallons of mermaid hair here let me get that out of the way <laughs> the off kilter of the image is the visible manifestation of his inner turmoil <laughs> Yes, that's what I was going for. How did you know? But um, yeah, even if you like hunch over, like here, I'm just like slouching, like there's still that neck here. There's still, he just kind of doesn't have a neck and the head's just sort of floating down. So I think if I included a neck there, that would have probably helped. I would have liked to have seen some of the fire brought in to like his character. Right now he's just kind of colored separately and then there's fire instead of them being together. So having a little bit of like highlights probably from like the yellows or reds brought into his outfit, I think would have kind of helped brought them together. And then the hands. <laughs> uh, now I'm cold, my hair keeps me warm. Fists are hard, I, I know, but um, it's not just a gaping hole here. <laughs> Unfortunately, as much as it might be easier to draw that way, perhaps, but um, having a, a reference to see how hands look in a fist, I think would help. Yes, there's other anatomy mistakes, but I think if, you, if I just did these couple little things, like include the neck, fix up the hands just a little bit. Like they're obviously not the center focus point, but like with artists, you can kind of tell where attention is going in terms of practice. Usually when you look at an art piece, um, if it's like a portrait or a character or a person sort of thing, there's a lot of attention with the face, like the head, the face looks beautiful, looks perfect. The eyes are like very stunning, eye catching. And then you can sort of start to look everywhere else and you can kind of see that things aren't as well polished. So hands are usually a really good tell. So it can be a little bit distracting once you're like, oh, wow, this looks so cool. And then you're looking around the fire and then you find the hands and then it's like, oh, well, the hands now are less strong. And I think that kind of takes away from it, especially when it's a piece of where he's supposed to be angry and you really want those tight grips of a hands. Like, I feel like the hands should have also been um, equally important to the face. But I think, I think that's, that's it for this one. The fire is so beautiful. Like, I don't know how I did that. And I looked up on, on my YouTube channel and I didn't record this one. So I'm super disappointed. <laughs> it's like, like, that's the helpful thing about having a YouTube. You get, to, you get to go back to your YouTube channel and be like, how did I do this artwork? Oh, wait, let me go look. And then you can go look back at what you did. September, to that, that, like there's such long gaps in between when I did art back then. So uh, first of all, I like the concept a lot. I like the background, how it's this really sort of soft, like, and it's like, it doesn't take away attention from the character, which is nice. I like the, the texture of the character. So this is a very sort of calming, flat, simple piece. I think like the hair adds a little bit of nice, it sounds weird to say, but like chaotic motion. Like everything else about this piece is very still and calm, but then you have like this wild hair. And I think that breaks it up nicely um, but as far as critiques go i it's probably not a very blatantly obvious thing off the bat the stars in the background are just a little bit bothersome to me i like that they're subtle i feel like that i could have done it a little bit more stronger have them like a little bit closer clusters or a little bit more variety in sizes the background is subtle and i like that but i could have maybe done just a little bit more just like a little bit more of a push. Um, obviously there's like s sort of subtle anatomy mistakes. Now, uh, just now looking at it, uh, the shoulder, I think, do they call it armor? I think they call it armor in the show, but the puffs on the shoulder, um, it's sort of like the shoulder deltoid goes right up to the puff, whereas the, the deltoid should go under the puff because the puff should be like, first of all, it puffs. So it should be out more and not just like a tangent going together. So that's, that's a pretty nitpick. I think they do call it armor though. I think that's canon. 
I'm not a Sailor Moon expert, though, but I think they do. But I almost would have liked to have seen just a little bit of shading on this. It kind of looks unfinished. And not that a piece necessarily needs shading, but I think because I put like this texture on it, it I almost just want to see what it would have been like if I had added shading. Because I think just like the tiniest little bit of cell shading, I think would have helped this pop a little bit more. The, any changes I would recommend would just be like super subtle. I don't know. And then I guess the, the buns here, I feel like I could have tried a little bit harder with like the hair connecting to the bun and then the bun itself. Make the buns a little bit as chaotic as the hair. Like I could have had like kind of loose strands wrapping around. But like, you know what I mean? Like her, her hair was already like crazy and wild and then you just have these perfect circles. Like if you're gonna make the hair all wild and crazy, like you can do that with a, a bun where the buns are like a little bit looser and they have kind of stray strands and like the hair wraps around in layers over each other and I think I could have emphasized that a little bit better. Anyway, so this next piece was September also of 2011 and this one was kind of done on a whim. I'm trying to remember too what I did with this because I think there's actually some photo manipulation in here. You know what? I think I drew that. Did I say in the description? Yep. All of this was painted. No textures or images were used. I tricked myself. I had to think back and be like, did I? <laughs> um, not that that would have been an issue either way, but like speaking of taking time and stuff, doing a picture, that's pretty good texture then. I think for the grass, I like did the grass and then I like did transforming to kind of have that illusion of perspective, but that works actually. Like the, it almost kind of looks like that grass is further back than this grass. But I think, I think this piece is interesting. It definitely leads to some questions. It has that center composition. I'd be curious to have seen it played around with like rule of thirds or some other sort of composition, but I think perhaps it being in the center does make it a little bit maybe uncomfortable if I could use that term. Obviously you have this sort of weird human-like creature that's a bit spoopy, but yeah, I like the, the textures. Yeah, it's an, it's an interesting piece. So let's get into what could be improved. Most of it I think comes down to the actual character itself in terms of balancing it with the background. Let me also bring this into Photoshop. Like it's okay that the character stands out, but I think it almost stands out a little too much. Like the shading around the butt, it feels too light to me. Like this is obviously a, a night scene or at least like there's not really much light happening. <laughs> uh, the central figure is, is perfect composition for this. The figure seems withdrawn or scared. Then being in the center increases the uncomfortableness. Very true. I can definitely see that. I think for me, a lot of this is just value. Um, there's obviously like some anatomy mistakes and stuff that I could improve. But I think if I just, just darkening up that to like kind of push the shadows, like you can still keep the eerie skin color and um, that eeriness to it, but just a little bit pushed darker. I know people like to say, stay away from center, center compositions, but th it can work. Like, so let's just bring the darks in. But like, look at that, immediately just bringing the darks in, I think it already starts, it, it helps make the character fit the scene better. That's And that's all I did was just make things a little bit darker. That already does like a huge difference. And that's kind of really what it needed. I think the feet actually look pretty well drawn. I feel like I must have used a reference because those feet are like too good even for me now. All right, so this is October. Oh, look at how mean I was. Oh no. Oh no. This is super old. I made this back in December of 2010. I tricked myself. Okay, well, we're back in December 2010. Oops. So many things wrong with it. Ew, it's ugly. Okay, so here's a critique on artist attitude, okay? This needs to stop. This this pit, th this pit, this bit is fine with the so many things wrong with it. Like it's okay being aware with, of that, but don't call your art ugly, bruh. But this is what I was talking about earlier and practicing a positive attitude. I know that like when I've talked about my art in the past, just saying like, oh, I'm really happy with this piece or I'm proud of this piece or I like this piece. I've had people comment to me being like, almost kind of wanting that themselves. Like, oh, like I wish I could uh, see more positives in my artwork or, oh, I like, I wish I could see things better or like, like my art more. Like I've had people ask me how to make themselves like their art more. And it's just, it's a thing that's taking me so long. Like it is a journey. It is like the same with any other like sort of thing. Like it takes practice to like your art, which sounds weird, but it's true. Like there's obviously other things that could be going on. Like you could have depression or, or, or other things. I'm not talking specifically about that, but obviously working on your mental health and stuff will help with that. But in terms of like what things might be a little bit more approachable, 
uh, for anybody to do is to literally give self critiques where you find positives. If you're looking at your artwork, no matter how old it is, if you did it today, if you did it yesterday, if you did it 20 years ago, look for something that you like about it that was working for the piece. And it doesn't matter if it's tiny. If you're like, oh, I like this section over here, or I like how I did the eyes, or I like this one thing, like say that, you can write it down, you can like just talk out loud about it, but like really affirm it really address it to help cement it in your mind and do it for every single artwork. Eventually you'll build up that habit and that mindset. It, it just will start to like, like you say something enough and it becomes true kind of thing. Like if you keep telling yourself, I hate my artwork, I hate everything I do, like it all sucks and it's terrible. Even me saying that now, like it's reminding me of how I felt back then and it hurts. And if you get into that habit of constantly berating yourself, that's the attitude you're going to have. You build up that attitude based off the, off the habits that you form. So if you're forming this habit of self-hatred with your artwork, like that's what's going to happen. That's why I try and emphasize <laughs> with, with this of just like, take a moment, like even if it takes you like five minutes or something, like just try and find anything. And even if it's one thing, like I'm sure if you keep looking, you can find more, but just try and find one, like just start with one. And it takes practice. Like it's gonna be tough. Like even on this exact stream earlier, I had trouble finding a positive of one of the Twilight pieces, but I took my time and I did. You're gonna find something. So and I'm gonna take water after that speech. <laughs> anyway, this artwork from 2010, because I lied to myself. First things, the positives that I like critique sandwich is a really a uh, nice method to go around in terms of practicing critique where you say a positive thing, uh, something that could be improved and you end with a positive. Very, very important to end with a positive <laughs> so you can, you know, help build up those, those good feels. But anyway, so positives. I do like the choice of the pose. I think it's very interesting for the character. Obviously you guys don't know the character, so only I can really say that it's interesting for the character. I know the smoke effects were a brush, so I didn't actually draw them, but I think they still work. I think it's fine. And I like the, um, the movement of the hair. It really feels like she just crouched down. So you have that motion. And I think that that really helps kind of push this pose to be a little bit more dynamic. And I like the dynamicness of it. I think the folds are working decently, definitely better than, you know, folds I've done in the past. So I think there's, there's improvements as time goes on all the time. I think the hands, which number one, you can see the hands. So that's great. And I think the hands are pretty okay. And I like that sort of like put faded bits over here too. It's it's the same problem I mentioned with the first artwork, I guess, to get to the negatives now. I don't like calling it negatives because I feel like that gives the wrong impression. It's just things that could be improved, but it's easier to say the word negatives. But it comes down to like the value issue. Like there's a bit more of a strong value with the face, but it's still super, super subtle. I feel like I could have pushed it a lot more. If we can bring this into Photoshop as well. <laughs> it's just a lot easier to show this stuff when it's, um black and white make it black and white and here you can kind of see what i mean even though the shading of the clothing is not that much more dynamic like compared to the skin tones like it's it's white <laughs> it's one of them, you're pale as fuck <laughs> There's obviously some anatomy, some anatomy mistakes here. And I think if I had paid closer attention to the pose and again, even possibly trace the pose that would have made um, a significant difference. But I, for me, it really just is if I had just darkened up the skin tone, if that was the only thing that I did, like same with this other piece, that was the only thing I did was just darken the skin tones. I think that would have already made this stronger. So, and even like I was saying earlier, like if you're gonna put focus in the face, then like put focus in the face. Uh, actually, I watched a video recently on how to kind of get your poses to be more dynamic. And it's basically similar uh, to like kind of anything else is that you take it to an extreme. So if you want to get better at having stronger values in your piece, then go way too far with your values. Go super dark with your blacks, go super light with your whites, take it to the ultimate extreme. And then you can gradually find a balance in between having something like this, where there basically is no value contrast to something that has like a good nice mix of both. And plus, once you go to that extreme, you can kind of learn like, okay, where on the spectrum do I want to be? Do I want to be uh, super flat and um, with minimal contrast, which is fine. And it can actually work really beautifully with artwork. Or do I want something a little bit more? So good, good exercise that I want to do. Anyway, the, the advice for the pose was the same thing. Take um, a drawing and super exaggerate the, the pose and uh, 
Yeah. All right. So we have October 31st, 2011. Did I do this in October 31st, 2011? <laughs> All right, I'm not seeing anything here. I think it's the same thing with this, but um, I'll go ahead and start off with its eyes. I think I, I drew them fairly nicely. I like I like the eyebrows. Eyebrows are always pretty tricky. But yeah, I think the details with the eyes, is th like, um, these are characters from Supernatural. <clears throat> back when I was into the show, back when the show was good. <laughs> but yeah, I think the, the shading here is really nice. Like this light bit with the light hitting the side of the face. I think you can, you the, the intensity of their stare, I think it gets across. Um, in terms of what could be improved, I think it's literally just contrast. Like, again, let's just take this, we'll take all of them into Photoshop. And you don't need Photoshop, like you can use whatever, but I just, I have Photoshop, so. But let's, let's see what happens when we hype up the contrast. Here we go. I don't know if we need to really go much lighter, but bring in those darks. It's such a difference. And obviously you would do this more controlled with a pencil. I'm going a little bit exaggerated here, but like it's so much more bolder and eye catching. So we have a before and after. It catches your eyes much more. Like you, you turn to look at this. So I think if I just bumped up that contrast, that would have really been like the main thing. Oh, and I used to have my folder called realistic fail. That's what I used to call it. No, bad, as we have already discussed. I don't even know if this is done. Was this called? Oh, it's not, it's not exact. I need to read first. This is, reading is important. <laughs> so it's not exactly done, but it's done in that I'm not going to work on it anymore and I figured I might as well upload it. All right, good enough reason. Oh, this is back in May. Okay, good. We're still in 2011. <laughs> I do like the hair. I think the hair has a lot of nice texture in it and it kind of stands out with uh, the smoothness-ish of everything else. I actually kind of like the lips a little bit and I like the shirt, kind of like the shading in the, the folds of the shirt. Like obviously I used a reference, so the, the folds are gonna look a little bit more accurate there. But yeah, I, th I like that. As far as things that could be improved, I think everybody here knows probably the first thing that I would say, which is the values. <laughs> so if we take it over to Photoshop, <laughs> But luckily we're in black and white, so I won't add like saturation when doing this. But when you're doing portraits, it's typically, again, advice I'm saying is just more aesthetically pleasing for general audiences. You don't have to do things I'm saying, uh, but for portraits, typically the most important thing about a portrait are the eyes. Humans very much care about eyes, where they're looking, what, what they look like, all that sort of stuff. If you're gonna do a portrait, definitely take your time with the eyes and really take your time with everything. Cause you, like I was mentioning earlier also, like you wanna have like a good balance and every, everything should kind of have an equal amount of importance in terms of like, ha like the final product, but it doesn't mean equal amounts of polish. So you can have things that are faded or blurred in the background, or you can have things that are kind of purposely left undone. Keeping in mind that like all these areas still come together to form that final piece and therefore should be treated equally, I think is something that, including myself, like not a lot of artists really pay too much attention to. It's not, it's not necessarily that you spend a lot of time on it. Maybe I'm wording this badly, but your attention should not be like swayed. It's like, okay, I put all this time into the eyes. Like the hands can just like whatever, like who cares? But because I was like, oh, who cares about the hands? Now, once the person who's looking at this is done looking at the eyes and they go to explore the rest of the painting, they'll see that the hands are more poorly rendered. That's like distracting. You could still spend a short amount of time on something, but like have it be more purposely short, I guess. Like it's short because it's to your liking and in, that it works together with the piece. And I think if I, I, I mean, this piece isn't done, so it's hard to say too much, but if I just sort of smoothed out the skin, obviously you can have a rough texture of skin and that can work, but I don't think that's working so much here. So I think if I sort of smoothed it out a little bit, and I'm probably working too much on this piece just to kind of get my point across, but the before, the after, the before, after, just having, getting in more uh, higher contrast. Draw the rest of the owl. <laughs> But all I did was a big blurry brush and I just pumped up the contrast a little bit more and smoothed out the skin just a touch. And I think that already makes like a huge difference. Like, cause like now this arm is like wet and then you, you bring back the, the values and there's depth to it, there's form. It's like, there's this shape wrapping around. Uh, whereas before it was just, I mean, you could argue that this was unfinished. If I were to finish it then, then this is the advice that I would give is that. All right, and the last artwork that I did in 2011, this is a portrait that I <laughs> drew of my brother. So this is my brother. And I actually drew this several times, the same portrait. I, I just, I loved the photo 
I thought the photo was really cool. Have like this really nice soft background. And then you have all the like the fog from his breath. And uh, I think the hair actually looks pretty nice here with some that texture. That camera has always been a little piece of shit, but I think the folds look really nice. And the shading is definitely much improved from when I initially drew it. So I can't really critique too much with this one because I sort of technically already did because I've redrawn this piece four times. The first time I drew it, it was more stylized, sort of inspired by like manga-ish, cartoonish sort of style that I was doing back then. And then I went ahead and, and more closely copied the photo with this uh, 2011 rendition. Realized some mistakes as I did the uh, 2014 version. So I guess spoilers if I ever do more of these sort of critique videos in the future <laughs> from 2014, um, then I realized that the, the head was too big. And I think even one of my friends at the time, or sorry, too small. And one of the friends, my friends at the time, even I think mentioned that. And I was like, no, but it can't be because I used a reference. And I had that mindset back then. I don't know what was like with me where it's like, if I used a reference, that means that like everything is accurate, which is not how that works. But that's how I thought for some reason. <laughs> uh, in terms of the, the improvement in between, I, this isn't as contrasted. Uh, I actually altered this, so it's a lot closer to the contrast in this picture. Um, I definitely tried to improve in terms of getting things more accurate, like the, the head size is much closer to the accuracy of what he actually looked like. The folds look much cleaner, much nicer, even though it's not as contrasted as this reference. Like I definitely pushed things further and you, I, and you can even see the details that I added. Managed to add more detail here, the camera looks better. Yeah, the folds and stuff. I just, the folds look much nicer. <laughs> but the, the real critique comes when it's the 2017 version. And I actually have a YouTube video and a blog post talking about the changes and the decisions that I made with uh, doing this particular update, where you can see I added much more dynamic values. And this is very accurate in terms of the contrast that I was able to get with, I think that was the same exact pencil set actually <laughs> that I used. Like you can see what I was going for here with the trees. I was adding these little circles for the leaves, but still trying to keep them loose. But instead of doing that, like drawing in the leaves, I erased in the leaves. And I think that keeps that more blurry texture than actually drawing them in. Cause once you add like a line, you're losing that blur instantly in terms of like an outline. So obviously you need to draw. <laughs> To, to like have anything down on the paper. But in terms of like an outline, once you add an outline, the blur is gone. So I think erasing instead had that be much stronger. The techniques that I use to get this to be more accurate, because this is ex extremely accurate uh, to the photo. So the techniques that I use change significantly. I won't get too into it. I have <laughs> a blog post talking all about it, but I practiced the camera beforehand. And I practiced drawing everything beforehand. And I think that build up to when I finally did the artwork itself made a huge difference. I didn't practice. I didn't test out anything. I didn't look up cameras. Um, I didn't do any sort of warming up. I just went into the picture and I think that does make it a, a weaker in terms of like accuracy and also like in terms of just the piece, just because, you know, now I have the head that's too small. Whereas if I had practiced beforehand and like double checked my work as I went along, then, you know, I could have gotten it closer to being accurate. You know, it's still, it's still a nice realism attempt. I think like the details are still really, really nice. And then, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, it's another piece that had I not drawn it, this wouldn't have happened. Whenever you look at your older art and you ever feel that that cringe, like try to remind yourself, like if you had not drawn that, you would not be drawing what you're drawing now. You would be on a completely different journey. As much as, you know, you might not like your older artwork, like it's, you know, you could take a moment to be a little bit grateful, you know, no matter how embarrassing or whatever, like it brought you to where you are now. Artwork butterfly effect, yeah. That's just something that I, that I try to remind myself, like whenever I, struggle with it. even in, with something I've drawn now it's like oh this piece really isn't coming out how I want but because I did this picture like I've learned things from it and I can take what I learned even if it's stuff that I don't like like I don't like how I did this and I don't like how this turned out okay that's a thing to learn to take to the next picture there we go there's my art journey in a nutshell we did all the 2011 artworks plus a bunch of 2010 for some reason <laughs> all right if you want to see my critique video for my artworks of 2010 i'll put a link in the description or in the card which is this direction and if you'd like to see more uh, of my older artworks i have a sketchbook playlist of 
a whole bunch of different years of my artworks. And I also have a critique playlist if you want to see some more critiques. Uh, if you want to catch me live, I'm on Twitch. Link is also in the description. Pointing is very hard still. <laughs> my voice is like cracking. Feel free to talk about how your art has been going at all. I don't know. I, I don't do this YouTube thing anymore. I don't know how to talk. I haven't even been looking at the camera like this whole time. <laughs> If you'd like, feel free to check out my Patreon as well. Uh, just for no reason. No reason in particular. Just, you know. Links to everything is in the description. Y'all been on YouTube before. Y'all know how it works. Okay, thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye!